is actually start our grind. This is really a crucial portion of what we do um, because this is where all the melding of ingredients will come in, right? So what I have here, this is a 75-25 blend of Nilgai, which is Texas antelope, as well as uh, some pork fat. So you can, the best thing to use is really pork fat or beef tallow. You want to stay within that margin of 75-25. So you can actually get a five plus or minus going in any direction, right? So if you could do 70-30, you're looking at a higher fat percentage. You can get too much fat, which would actually turn more into gristle, right? But if you do too little fat, it'll be way too lean. And we've all had like a piece of sausage. It was just a little bit too lean, right? And the other thing we notice is that there's not a lot of flavor. Fat equals flavor, right? So I have this. This is nice and cold. I have my grinder ready to go. So the different, the different um, parts of the grinder, everything that, that actually touches the protein needs to stay nice and cold. Everything that does, okay? Um, and that even goes down to, and now since we're doing this for demonstration, I'll, I'll smoke these sausages for myself and the staff, but you wouldn't, it, the whole purpose of actually keeping all this cold is because you want the fat not to start to smear, okay? We know that when fat starts to heat up, it'll actually become very, very soft. When you, when you get into a proper sausage, you cut into it, you should see small little specks of, of fat throughout. If you don't see that, it's either you're either you're either eating bologna, right, or you're eating you're eating something where where the product was actually sp spent too much time too warm, okay. And so what we are going to do is I have uh, I have my hopper right here and I have the manifold inside here is an auger. If you've never seen the inside of one of these, it's a spiral auger that as it turns on, it will start to spin and push everything towards the die plate and the blade that sit flush on the front of the machine. What happens is, is as that machine pushes that auger, it'll push the meat towards that plate and the, and, the, and the protein and the fat have nowhere else to go but through that plate. And when it goes to that plate, it gets, it gets chopped up. Now there's different millimeter plates that you can, that you can use. We're gonna start off on a really small one and we're, gonna, we're only gonna do one grind just for, just for demonstration sake. But depending on the size of your, of your die plate will depend on the end product, right? So if you're gonna get a much larger die plate, this would be great for your chili. You can get some that are just massive or they look kidney shaped. This would be, this would be great for really uh, any of your larger uh, applications like your chili, or if you're gonna do roast or something like that. Um, and then if you're gonna do a hamburger grind, you can get one closer to the, to, to the middle, right? And this will, this will be nice and larger chunks of fat, nice large chunks of protein. As long as you get that 75-25 or that 80-30 or, I mean, I'm sorry, 80-20 or 70-30, you are going to find that sweet spot. Some people like it on the leaner side, some a little bit more on the fattier side. So, I love the, mo the motor train on this is super quiet. If you go, if you get a, um, a little bit lower quality, um, grinder, you'll, you'll, you'll hear the, the mechanisms. You'll hear everything kind of force its way through. So as we start to push it through here, the great thing is, is because of how, how tough this bad boy is, I actually don't need to do much of forcing it. So what I have done is I've just put a real simple blend of nutmeg, uh, salt, pepper, and white, uh, white pepper, and some rubbed sage. And so as this goes through, it's mixing all of that up. The sodium, and so this is not a, this is not going to be a cured sausage. This is strictly a um, a fresh sausage. So there is no cure. There's no sodium nitrate, no sodium nitrite in this. We are going to do another course about curing, but at this point, this is really just to focus on your your fresh sausage. Now, what can I do with this from here on out? If I don't want to, if I actually don't want to use this for sausage. I could just as easily put it in a, in a game bag and use it for, for pan frying or make it for tacos. You want to do ground, uh, at this point, it, this all is just going to be ground um, antelope. So there's, there, there's many applications you can use. So as this starts to run through, I'm gonna tell you a little story. So when I was in culinary school, I was, I was taught by a gentleman named Leslie Bartosh, and Leslie was an amazing chef. 
And he, um, he taught me a lot about what I know about processing meat and charcuterie, not the cute little boards you see everybody making now, but the actual preparation and the curing, the real curing of, of proteins, right? Making amazing dried sausages, making some phenomenal different terrines and pâtés and stuff like that. That's, that's really the bedrock of my understanding of, of this type of practice. But I sat there and I watched him and he, and I, again, I, I grew up making sausage and I grew up spending a lot of time cleaning these machines. And if you've ever ground your own meat, you know exactly what's inside this auger right now. <clears throat> if you haven't, what is inside this auger is ligaments, right? As, as lean as I can get that meat, there's still going to be pieces of ligaments that are caught up in that auger. And what I want to do is I want to focus on kind of the practicality of it all and hopefully make my job a little bit easier. So I use bread. All right, so don't go get your organic, free, gluten-free, indigenous bread from wherever. What I want you to do is go get cheap. That down, down in South Texas, we have Buttercrust Bakery. Mimi knows what's up. So she, she's from San Antonio, just like me. So uh, down there, it's, it's cotton candy bread. It's like it's all sugar. And I don't eat it, but I use it for this process. Why? I want it to be very, I want it to be viscous almost, right? I want it to be starchy and sugary. I'm not going to eat it. What I do want it to do is as it goes through, it acts as cotton candy, and it will clean out that auger, and it will clean out the manifold. And then when we're done and we start running the machine, what ends up happening is, is we end up with, like all this right here, still good. But once you actually see the bread start to come out, this has actually started to to clean out that manifold. I mean, you could use, you could just as well eat this. It's just, there's, there's too much starch in it. So this would be the, the, the binder, the, too much of a binder here. So this recipe that we have here is, a, is going to be a little bit different than the recipe that we have online or the recipe that we're trying today. So what we're doing today is we're doing, um, I'm using some uh, local favorites down in South Texas. Um, so you, when you're when you're making a grind, when you're actually making a grind for your uh, for stuffing, what you want to do is you want to focus on binders, right? You want to focus on different things that you can add to it to kind of bring everything together. And one of those things can either be bread or it can also be tortillas. In this case, for the sausages that we'll be using a little bit later, or the, the ones you're going to try a little bit later, these are actually going to um, they're, they're bound together with corn tortillas. So just as easily use that. One thing I didn't add to that would be aromatics. Ar aromatics are going to be super important to all your sausages, right? Um, this aromatics will come in the way of herbs. They will also come in the way of your, uh, of your onions, your garlic, anything you add to it. When you start to add this, you also need to remember that garlic, especially onions, are 90% water. Right, so when you add that to it, what will happen is, is if you don't, if you actually don't poke the sausage and, and give it give it ways to expel some of that, what you will end up doing is uh, steaming the inside of that sausage casing, which is what you don't want. First, first thing we're going to do is actually walk through the um, the kind of the traditional way of making it, of making your sausage. Um, we talked earlier about the different types of casings. This is going to be your natural casing. This is going to be something you can, you can get this online. You can get it at Cabela's. I guarantee you if you go to a butcher or a processor, they will have sausage casings for you. This is uh, pig intestines that's been cleaned and rinsed and then salted. Uh, if you keep them salted, they will last nearly forever. They will last a really, really long time. Um, the moment that they hit water, you need to make sure that you rinse them in nice, nice warm water will keep, uh, keep them nice and pliable. If you're going to use a, a non-natural casing or a collagen casing, these again are made from collagen that's been cooked down and they're, they're, they're fantastic for smoking. However, what ends up happening is, is you don't get that snap that you would typically get from a natural casing. So inside this hopper right here, I'm going to turn this around. Inside this hopper right here is, is a sausage blend that we did. So I'll walk through just what this looks like. And inside here is our force meat. And as I start to spin this, what's going to happen is it's going to start to release air, which you 
probably can't see from right there, is that there's a gasket right here. We want to lift this up every once in a while and push it back down. What this does is it releases a lot of the air that's packed down inside that manifold. So another thing is I actually prefer using these clear tubes, right? These, um, the, the great thing about these horns, we call them horns, these clear horns, I can see when the sausage force meat is coming out. If, if this were black or metal, I have no idea what's going on. So I can also look for, for bubbles. I can also look for little, uh, little imperfections in there. And so when I start to turn, I can see where it's at. Now, with something like this, this is my, this is my little roadie sausage stuffer. I, I, I make sausage on the road a lot. So the one I have at the ranch is this big, and it's, and it's powered with a, a, a pedal. So I like these, and we can just as easily use a grinder, right? We can use a grinder to, to, to fill our, our sausage and not just necessarily stuff it. The reason why I don't like using the grinders is this. When you turn it off, and if you're using a natural casing, if you've ever used one before, you know darn good and well that there can be imperfections. There can be little cuts or lacerations in it. The pressure can be too much and you can have a blowout. Well, as you're making it, if you have that blowout and you are making it on here, all you got to do is release the pressure and it stops. With a, with, a, with a machine like that, especially a high horsepower one, the moment you stop, it takes a while for it to slow down right? In that while, it can push out more protein. It can make a bigger mess. So I like this because I have all the control. Um, any bit of sausage that, you, that comes out that's not going to stay in the casing, feel free to just tuck it over the side, put it right back into the hopper, and keep back up. So again, about these, about these casings, they need to stay nice and moist. What I will do is I'll pull. I'm going to do this and then kind of give you all a chance to look at it. What I'll do is do a square knot just on the end of that, right? And again, this needs to stay nice and moist. Every time I think about it being dried out, I need to go ahead and add water, okay? So as I start to fill, see that? Yeah, that's perfectly fine. So what I'll do is just go a little bit further down, tighten the sausage. I'm not, I'm not really concerned mostly about the air that's, um, that's trapped in there right now. That's going to still do that. Look at that. Again, like I was saying earlier, I really I, I like when these situations happen because it kind of gives you an understanding of what to do when it happens. So as this is not the sexiest part of today's show, I apologize, but we all love sausage, so there, there is some redeeming factor there. So as this starts to come out, what it will do, and I'm going to go really, really slowly, it will start to fill up the casing. I want it to fill every nook and cranny that's there. If I stay firm and I, and I just hold on to it, I'm, I'm exploiting every bit of pressure that's there. However, if I keep holding on, there, whatever small little gash on here, I'm gonna, it's going to be exploited and that is going to explode everywhere. So I'm going to get to the casing I'm going to get to the sausage size that I want. This is a good bratwurst size. So one thing I taught um, the, the girls from Women Hunt, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a baseball fan, right? And so I always think of baseball teams being home and away, home and away, right? So it's all about you always start off with a home game. Now, this sounds kind of elementary and silly, but next time you make sausage, you're going to be like, oh, yeah, home and away. I got it. So you're going to, for the home, you're going to spin it towards yourself. So you're gonna take your sausage link, give it a little bit of slack right here, and just spin it towards yourself because your players are coming home. Then continue and just fill up that link, adding a little bit of pressure as we go along, right, to fill up any of those air gaps. And now, since this one was home, what's this one? Away, so this is gonna go the opposite direction. This is just one way of doing it. I like doing this because I'm very particular about the sizes, right? Another thing you can do is as you're starting to make the sausage, you can go through and make one long wedding link, right? Um, that's, that's a really, really quick way of doing it. I just don't do it because I don't like seeing some sausages that are a little bit bigger than others. So as I'm doing that, what you would do is you would do the same thing. You would twirl away from you and twirl towards you, or you could twirl every other one going the same direction, and that would do the same thing. As we start to fill up this casing, Every time we do that, 
you know, going back and forth, we are tightening more and more this link right here. Because this is the intestines of a pig, it's mostly collagen. So this collagen starts to break down. The moment it starts to get heated, what happens is it actually creates bonds and it makes it very, very tight. Now we're not done with this yet. What we want to do is we'll actually take something called a sausage poker. Now you can get all your jokes out right now, I know. But it's a little prong sausage poker and you'll go through and actually put small lacerations in it. And you're going, but wait, chef, hold on a second. You said earlier, like those were really bad. Well, after this is actually already stuffed, putting those in there does two things. One, it helps the smoke actually reach the casing, right? Because the casing, even though it's nice and firm, it has minor, minor little imperfections. And so if you puncture little holes in there, what it will do is it gives it more access. That smoke has more access to the protein. The other thing is, if you do not poke the holes throughout, you're essentially boiling the meat within the casing. And if you've ever had a piece of game sausage and it was just grainy and fell apart, chances are it wasn't actually, it actually didn't give enough chance to, to do that, to lose some of that moisture. This is doubly so if you use a sausage that has maybe uh, carrots or maybe onions. Because remember, that's mostly water. We talked about that earlier. So what happens is, is when they start to cook, they steam and that, that steam has nowhere to go. So it just stays trapped within that casing. Okay, so what I have here are two tamale husks. For all you northerners, this is the husk of the outside of corn. <laughs> Down in San Antonio, these are everywhere. We make little dolls out of them. Anybody here been to San Antonio before? No? Come visit me. You have, a, you have a place to hang out. But I wanted to offer you this application because this is something that you can do at home because you don't have one of these, right? Or you don't, you're not going to go out and buy a, a, a grinder. Um, you're not going to sit there and, and spend all this money on this. But a pack of tamales are like four bucks, five bucks for, for the tamale husks. Do not pull a Dan Quayle and eat it without taking the tamale husk off the outside of it. That's a very old joke. There's some people like, I don't know who Dan Quayle is. Type in Dan Quayle visit San Antonio and read the article. It's hilarious. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, and you don't necessarily, I'm just using the left of uh, the rest of what's left inside this hopper. So I'm going to essentially make a little bit of a steak, a tube steak kind of thing. And what we're going to do is we're going to wrap this super tight. So if, any, if anybody can see up here, we're going to push all the air out like so. And then when we're halfway done, so we have a little bit of this overlap here, we're going to treat it just like a burrito. And we're going to wrap it off like that. So what we can do then take a couple of strips of our tamale husks and then tie over here. Now you can also use string. Look guys, I am prepared, how about that? You can use string, and this is what we did for the tamales that we'll sample here shortly. And just one good tight knot around it, push all the air out. This going into a smoker for about an hour, hour and a half, you get a really good smoke ring. This is much different than the actual sausage casing that we used earlier. This is so much more permeable, right? Because it'll, no need to prick this or treat it any differently. What you will do is you'll just set it right on top of the smoker and let it go until it's done. Your smoke ring is going to be much bigger on this one. So if you look at like a properly good smoked uh, sausage that you'll see, you'll see a darker protein around the edges of the sausage. This does come from that, that smoking and those exchanges of different enzymes and the smoke, whatever smoke you might be using, whatever hardwood you might be using. And then um, what you're left with is a nice little smoke ring. This is where the flavor of that smoke comes in. These are a little bit different. You need to treat them a little bit different because what will end up happening is, is that smoke ring will be a little bit bigger. So you're going to get more of a smokier product. So if you're not really kind of into, into those hardwood smokes, then, then maybe either put another tamale husk on it or don't do it as long or as much smoke. Um, so a little bit about smoke. So what I'm using back here is the XXL from Camp Chef. This is a Wi-Fi setup all on your phone smoker. Okay, uh, it uses it uses uh, the pellets. The pellets that we're using today a mix of uh, hickory, uh, post oak, and a little bit of mesquite. The reasons why 
I, I like that combination, and especially post soak and mesquite, is because anytime you use oak, if you're going to use a hardwood smoke, oak has to be one of the parts of that formula. The reason being is, especially down in Texas, we have cedar, which you should never smoke with, ever, 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 ever. Don't don't make that mistake. I went camping once with a bu with a bunch of guys, and they were like trying to be like, "Oh, we can." Yeah, you already know what happened. It was horrible. It was horrible. And these guys, I show up on day two, and they're already like halfway through smoking a brisket. And I walk, and I pulled onto the property, and I was like, "Somebody's either burning brush, or oh no." And these guys had two bites of this brisket, and they're like, "No, we can't." So no cedar, but you always want to use hardwoods, right? So you, um, and obviously uh, good quality wood. Don't go chop up a pallet you found in the back alley and use that. That may be hardwood, but you're not going to be pleased with it. And so what will end up happening is, is you want to use your post oak as one of the formula pieces because post oak is actually going to burn hotter and longer. It's going to act more as your fuel, not so much as your flavor. Now, oak does lend itself to some flavors. However, mesquite is going to be your flavor or maple or maybe even your hickory. Um, apple, cherry, any one of these are actually going to translate into a really, really good sausage or brisket or whatever, whatever you, you have in mind. So um, one thing I didn't talk about is when you're actually adding your aromatics and especially your spices, add them to your first grind. And something we teach at, uh, something we teach at gastronomy is same thing we teach at our ranch is that it's, it's a way of doing something, right? A lot of people are like, no, what I will do is I'll do my first grind and then I'll add my spices to my first, uh, after the first grind, and then go through the second. You're missing a chance to grind up all of it, especially if you're using a cure, if you're using sodium nitrate or sodium nitrite, you want to let that cure mix in with the protein. What you will see is the cure will start to turn the, the, the protein a rich mahogany red color, right? This is simple salt and oxygen, because it's been sitting here, will start to turn it that kind of pinkish or brownish pink. If you're using a nitrate or a nitrite, it will act a lot different. It will cause it to start to cure, and you want to mix all that together. But to answer your question, what you actually are looking for is weigh, your, weigh as much of that trim as you can and then do the percentage of your, your pork fat, your, back, your, your, your fat back, or your uh, beef tallow. And you can even use bacon. I use bacon all the time in my sausage making. You also have to contend with the fact that it's not just one piece of fat, there is some protein mixed in there as well.